Josina Campbell. And I'm Jessica Clary. Here are today's top stories. In international news, Canada's government is introducing legislation that would crack down on cyberbullying by making it illegal to distribute intimate images without consent. Justice Minister Peter McKay said Wednesday that the cyberbullying can destroy lives. If passed, the legislation also would empower courts to seize computers, cell phones, and other devices that provide for reimbursement of costs related to removing the images from the internet. McKay says Canadians have been touched by deaths of a number of teens. At least 17 people have died in torrential rains that turned the picturesque Italian island of Sardinia into a flood-ravaged mud bath. The freak storm smashed bridges and swept away cars. Italian Premier Enrico Letta says the priority is reaching remote areas, saving the lives of those still unaccounted for, and providing for those left homeless. Michelle Obama shared one with her first dog, Bo. Hillary Clinton tweeted one with her daughter, Chelsea. Now, Selfie the Smartphone Self-Portrait has been declared Word of the Year for 2013, according to Britain's Oxford University Press. The publisher of the Oxford Dictionary said Tuesday that Selfie saw a huge jump in usage in the past year, bursting from the confines of Instagram and Twitter to become mainstream shorthand for any self-taken photograph. In national news... The mayor of Washington, Illinois, estimates that up to 500 homes in his town were either damaged or destroyed by a wave of fierce storms that brought on damaging winds and tornadoes to 12 states yesterday. Mayor Gary Manier says everyone's without power, but some people are without everything. At least six people in Illinois were killed and dozens more were injured. A white supremacist who went on a cross-country killing rampage from 1977 to 1980 has been put to death in Missouri. A lethal injection was given to 63-year-old Joseph Paul Franklin this morning after the U.S. Supreme Court denied him a stay of execution. Franklin was given the death penalty for killing a man in a sniper shooting at a synagogue near St. Louis in 1977. But he was convicted of seven other murders and admitted shooting and wounding civil rights leader Vernon Jordan and Hustler magazine publisher Larry Flint. A tiny Utah town had to skip an election earlier this month because part-time officials forgot to advertise or prepare for it. And it wasn't the town's first election flub. Wallsburg, population 275, failed to schedule an election two years ago, and the city officials had to be appointed then. Wasatch County officials say that they were supposed to go up for election November 5th, but once again, Wallsburg forgot to get things going. County Clerk Brent Titcomb Promises officials will remember in 2015. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts. I'm Dominique DiBartolo. This week, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is awash in animal-related protests over its floats this year. Controversies involved the unlikely pairing of rocker Joan Jett and Shamu the killer whale. Activists plan to line the route of next week's parade to protest a Sea World float over accusations in a new documentary that the theme parks treat whales badly. And ranchers succeeded in getting Jett pulled off the South Dakota tourism float after they questioned why the vegetarian and animal rights ally was representing their beef-loving state. Chris Brown is scheduled to appear in a Los Angeles courtroom to update a judge on his probation for his 2009 attack on Rihanna. Wednesday's hearing is the first time Brown has been in court since he was arrested last month in Washington, D.C. A 20-year-old man accused Brown of punching him after he tried to get in a photo with R&B singer. It's kind of a big deal that Emerson College is changing the name of its School of Communication. The college in Boston will rename the school for one day only, the Ron Burgundy School of Communication, on December 4th to honor the fictitious television anchorman. Actor Will Ferrell, in character, is scheduled to share his path to journalism greatness with students. His visit will include a news conference, the renaming ceremony, and a screening of Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. Ferrell, as himself, will introduce the movie. Stay classy, New Paltz, and stay tuned for local news. Flip six stairs takes determination. So will getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. I'm Emma Phillips. This week in local news, Alpha Epsilon Phi's Manicure Day was this week. Students came to Sub 100 for manicures, cupcakes, and more to raise more for the breast cancer philanthropy. 
Let's take a look. Hey everybody, I'm Alexandra Schoff and I'm here with NPC TV at Manicure Day in Sub 100 hosted by the sisters of Alpha Epsilon Phi. Let's go take a closer look. Today we're doing manicures for $3. 100% of proceeds will be going to Shark Charity, which is our breast cancer organization that we raise money for every fall. Um, besides manicures, we have cupcakes from JJ's Rock and Cupcakes, cotton candy from Simply Sweet. So far we raised $967, so we need like 33 more, so come out and help us out. We really want to reach our goal. As you could see, Manicure Day was such a success. I'm here with the Alpha Epsilon Phi sisters who raised so much money, painted my nails, gave me a few cupcakes, ate some cotton candy, definitely can't complain. Back to you guys in the studio. RHSA's Condom Casino was this past week. The event was to promote safe sex. It was held in the sub NPR where students could play games to win condoms. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us tonight. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the sub NPR where Condom Casino is in full swing, an annual event bringing students together through playing blackjack, winning condoms, and learning a little bit more about the benefits of safe sex. Let's go take a closer look. I love playing the games, they're fun, and you get to win condoms. What more can you want? This is readily available for any student and they don't have to be ashamed about coming to get what they need to stay safe. Yeah, honestly, I've learned a lot about STD rates and they're a lot higher than I thought, and also just like ages of, um, like when people like first start having sex and like, you know, how that correlates to SEDs and all of that. So I've learned a lot. As you can see, Condom Casino was a huge success. If you couldn't make it tonight, come out next year to try your hand at gambling with condoms. Back to you guys in the studio. Finally, another racially offensive message was discovered on a whiteboard by resident assistant staff in Gage Hall on Tuesday, November 12th. Dugatkin read the offensive message read N-word alert what UPD believes could be lyrics from a song by rap artist Drake, titled All Me. The college is currently investigating the possible causes of the act. Dugatkin said whether it was quoting lyrics or intending to be offensive does not matter. Bad intent or good intent, you have to think a step or two ahead. These are very hurtful things to say and are not accepted in our society. Back to you guys. That's all for Ion New Pulse. I'm Josina Campbell. And I'm Jessica Clary. Thanks for joining us.